Current day Sinn Féin was founded in 1970 and is currently one of the most influential parties in both the North and South of Ireland. Sinn Féin, while being a prominent party in the South of Ireland, also contests elections in the North of Ireland and is one of the two largest parties in the Northern Irish Assembly. Notably, it holds seven seats in the UK House of Commons, but does not participate in the House due to its policy of abstentionism. The party itself would be considered a left-wing Republican party, and to many represents a yearning for change in the Irish political establishment, while others are worried about the party's historical links to the IRA and in more recent history, the Provisional IRA. The party garnered an historic vote in the 2020 Irish general election by securing the highest percentage of first preferences and is now the joint largest party in Dáil Éir. The party also saw a large number of young people turning to them as a voice for change in the Irish political system. So the question is, why do young people get involved with Sinn Féin? I sat down with Ogre Sinn Féin member Samantha Nikiovi to ask just that. So uh, thanks a million for sitting down with me, Sam. Anyways, um, first of all, I just want to ask, what was your, an, your initial spark into the world of politics? What really got you interested in it? So I, growing up in the North, um, obviously you do kind of become a little bit politically minded. Um, I actually grew up in a working class unionist area, but I'm from a mixed family. So I did get to kind of experience injustices and see injustices and it kind of made me want to, you know, change them. Mm -hmm. And also one of my family members is LGBT. So I went to my first ever Pride at the age of seven and spent most of my teenage years campaigning for marriage equality in the North. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that kind of did kind of swoop me into kind of grassroots politics and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then obviously you're a member of Ogre Sinn Féin and Sinn Féin, I would imagine, the senior party as well. Uh, what was the sort of drawing factor to Sinn Féin? Um, so I started studying in Wales um, and kind of a new identity anyway, like I never really identified as British, but being over in Wales and then with Brexit coming in and everything, um, it just became more and more important to me to have um, Irish unity and it was kind of a process of elimination to try and figure out which party I was going to go into. Mm -hmm. um, I did like a few other parties, but the abstentionist stance as well was a very strong mm -hmm. one. That I I held the belief. So yeah, I kind of, I was very, very drawn to Sinn Féin whenever I saw Martina Anderson in the European Parliament, just really defending the um, no hard border and the need for Irish unity and for Northern voices to be heard. And um, the fact that we no longer have a Northern representative within the European Parliament during these negotiations as well. Just on Sinn Féin as, uh, as well, because they're one of the few parties that contest elections in both the North and the South of Ireland. Was it more the Northern side of uh, Sinn Féin that drew you to the party or was it? did you look at it as more of an All-Ireland sort of movement as well? Yeah, I see it as more of an All-Ireland sort of movement. Hence why I'm so like strongly drawn to the abstentionist stance as well. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that we should be in Westminster. I believe we should be trying to fix our problems here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the whole decolonize your mind kind of scenario as we yeah. need to be working as an all-Ireland basis to try and deliver an all-Ireland. Mm -hmm. So as a me member of Over Sinn Féin, what has been the main aspect of youth politics that has kept you involved to this day? So I kind of got into it from a grassroots level. So I did like the unity behind it and I like the idea of young people having a voice, especially because there's like a term up here being trying to get the dinosaurs out because you do kind of see that the majority of our elected representatives are of a certain generation and everything and I feel like our generation tend to have a more open mind about things you know like you know my generation we didn't see the troubles we saw like the tail end so I feel like we can kind of see things from a, not a better perspective but a more level-minded perspective like a less biased perspective in a sense and I think that we kind of we work more towards the future we're not so clinging to the back to the past Feel like that's kind of really really important about youth politics and young people getting involved in politics to try and you know kind of revolutionize the thing in a sense that we have more young voices and uh, yeah because it, it is kind of shown like you do feel like you don't really have a place within the political sphere if you're young you're always told oh you know when you're older you can have a better better shaped opinion you'll be more re well read and everything but like that doesn't mean to say that when i'm older i will be more well read you know like i know a lot yeah. of people who are older that haven't lifted a book in their lives hmm. I think, yeah, we need to be encouraging young people more and we did see that with the BLM um, manifestations here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that actually perfectly leads on to my next question as well, because uh, the question coming up of do politicians actually listen to younger people? Do you find in your own party and then it's just politicians in the whole from other parties that they're either beginning to listen to young people more or they are still listening to them as much as they did beforehand? 
So one of the things I do really like about Ogre Sinn Féin is that young people do tend to have a very good um, representation. So in our art cola, we need to have three members from the youth wing present, um, and the art cola tends to be our, our leadership. And we also have like a National Youth Congress, which allows us to kind of pose motions and vote for Ogre policy and everything like that there. And I mean, like the originality of, or the origins of Ogre Sinn Féin was to keep pushing party a bit further left and you know to add to the party a little bit so that we could kind of challenge their stance on everything and we have succeeded I mean like our our stance on abortion is a bit more radical than um, or a bit more left-wing than like senior party and everything and we do have like a lot of interaction with senior party especially with the the current Irish Unity campaign as well mm-hmm. we're kind of not leading it but like we're kind of having a big presence online about that too and like bringing more young people in because it is the younger generations that are saying like United Ireland probably isn't going to be so bad like we are educating ourselves differently to what would have been taught in schools a few years ago and everything so I like I do like the interaction that you they have within Sinn Féin as well and just because you're a member of Ogre Sinn Féin doesn't mean that you're only a youth like you do have the opportunity to be in your local common and to be active within the senior party and work your way up and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I would say that um, our politicians are listening to young people, maybe not like 110%, but I do feel like it is a lot better than other parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Sure. Um, with regards to universal politics uh, for young people, there's a lot of things that draw people towards certain political issues, like we saw with the Eighth Amendment referendum, marriage equality, and more so now with regards to climate change. Uh, there's things that attract young people to politics uh, that don't really have a party colour. So do you think there's anything in the future now that we can see maybe galvanising young voters to go out and, you know, campaign for something that doesn't involve parties? I think that's kind of what drew me into politics originally. And then whenever I realised, I kind of felt like there was strength uh, strength in numbers and I wanted to kind of be more involved with a bigger picture. So that's why I joined the party. But I did go in with... I started off with the youth organisations such as Youth Action and things like that to campaign for marriage equality and um, like Alliance for Choice, I was out campaigning for the North is Next and everything. So I do think that there is a strong presence of youth voices within grassroots uh, politics and I think that's that's really, really good and we need to keep putting out elected, re- or not elected representatives but candidates that would bring about you know, the changes that young people want. And that's the only way to ever get a young voice heard as well, is if you have representatives that are representing their actual, like what they want. So like, if we know that the youth want marriage equality and stuff, we should be standing, putting out pol- their policies. We should be putting out policies that are what they're, what we're seeing the people doing. Like politics is about to be, is it meant to be about representing the people, you know? So we can't just put out, oh, well, you know, I believe this, it shouldn't be about that. It's like, right, well, my constituents believe this, so I should be putting this forward. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing now that a lot of constituencies, the most people, the most politically minded, are becoming the youth. Mm-hmm. We should be interacting with the youth and seeing what they want, and you know, making policies that go through with what they want as well. Which I am noticing that some politicians don't actually do, mm-hmm. but I think that, that definitely is the way, the way about to getting more young people involved and having a more universal youth presence within politics is to be putting forward candidates that have, that are acknowledging their voices and are raising those issues. And then with the likes of protesting and stuff, that is allowing for a larger collective youth voice as well. Because it is mainly young people I'm seeing at these protests. My whole life that I've been there, you know, Pride, it's mainly people under a certain age demographic. Um, so I think like events like that definitely are, they're drawing people in because it's a fun, fun event, but it's also showing them like there is an actual issue here and this is how we tackle that. Yeah. Um, so for yourself in general, uh, where do you see yourself uh, going in the future of not only youth politics but politics in general so i really like grassroots activism and i love you know kind of helping within the community and kind of putting pressure on the people at the top to get what what we feel like we want and so i I would like to at some point become a political representative for my area just to make sure that everyone's voices are heard you know i grow i live in a fairly unionist area i live in lisburn and I am saying it's been the exact same elected representatives for us that have been there for the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And people do just vote for them because, you know, they see the colour of the flag, it's the way it's always been. 
I would like to kind of shake that up a little bit and make people have more of an interest in reading about politics and, you know, holding their elected representatives for account. So yeah, I think grassroots activism is definitely the way for me, if I ever, I wouldn't mind running. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one question uh, I just have about all Ireland parties as a whole, but it more so uh, reflects on Sinn Féin because they would be the major all Ireland party. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the questions is, is that the six counties in the north, especially when going for electoral issues, I've noticed, uh, at least from speaking to members from uh, the SDLP, Sinn Féin, the North and everything, that issues are very, very different than what they would be down down in the south of Ireland. You know, you have the likes of the Troubles really playing a key role in people's main decisions for voting in politics. It's obviously Sinn Féin prides itself on being an All-Ireland Party, but how does it, say, incorporate both the North and the South and those elements when those political issues are so different in certain ways? That is a very, very good question. And I think Ogre does help a lot with that because we are so united. Like we have we have events where we get the people from the North and the South and we do vote for the policies. So we ensure that the policies are encompassing, you know, North and South. And um, I think it does bode well to kind of create a more united atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Well, and yes, we have like the legacy issues within the troubles and stuff as well, but we are kind of still trying to push for a better future with things like that. So. I think having a united stance on, you know, abortion and marriage legislation and things like that, that does kind of help to encompass, you know, the North and the South and with regard to the legacy issues. I think just kind of focusing on a more positive and informative approach to Irish unity, Mm -hmm. that has definitely helped and just bringing out more information, ensuring that the youth are informed and, you know, other members are informed and having a more positive campaign as well like Sinn Féin are always very active within their local communities even if it's not local communities like we saw John Finnegan going into more unionist areas during the Covid pandemic to, re- to deliver like the food parcels and stuff mm-hmm. so I think yeah I think on a united basis just because especially in the north you know just because somebody has a different identity to you we shouldn't be treating them any different you know we're all living in the same island we should be treating it as if we are all you know all united mm-hmm. regardless and I, I coming from a unionist background and coming into Sinn Féin with, it, with that mentality, I think, um, like I've been more than accepted coming in. See, I think, I think Sinn Féin works really well with it, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to, like, if you want Irish unity, you need to be united, regardless of whether you're a unionist or you're a Republican, you need to just kind of see everybody is okay, we all have to work together because we're all, we're all stuck here, like we may as well mm-hmm. try and make things better. From your own opinion as well, actually, just with regards to politics up north, and it is it is something um, that really doesn't affect the south of Ireland as much as well the north, but there is a lot of, uh, especially in the past, sectarian politics of people being divided along different lines of religion. Do you find that uh, the youth, especially in Ogre Sinn Féin, are a lot more progressive with coming to address terms of sectarianism in politics? I do believe that, you know, most members would be quite forward thinking whenever it comes to stuff like that there. However, like, as with every party within the North, you are going to have people that are kind of just into the party because of their mommy and daddy or their granny and granddad, and that's what they were kind of told. And one thing that I've really appreciated from Ogre Sinn Féin, especially during the pandemic, is we have had a lot of education sessions and stuff about politics, political movements, political theory, what's going on at the minute. And we had stuff about the Western Sahara, about, you know, the hunger strikes and everything like that over here. So I do believe, like, I feel very accepted coming into Ogre Sinn Féin. I do think everyone's a bit more progressive. But I think that we definitely need to keep keep with the education about certain issues so that people aren't just coming in, you know, because their mommy and I told them to. Like, they need to actually have, like, a sound political understanding. Because, like, we are a political party at the end of the day. It's not a youth, or- like, it's not just a youth organisation. We're here to mm-hmm. create change. And I think education is part of that change. We saw that in Cuba. Um, we saw that in a lot of Latin American countries. So I think that Ogre should be, continue to put that out. Yeah, of course. And I'll just leave it on one final question. Obviously, Sinn Féin did very well in the last recent Irish general election. Do you see that continuing on in the future, maybe further success for Sinn Féin? Or maybe do you see it maybe cutting back a bit? Or what's your whole opinion take on that? Um, so I think the future is very, very positive for Sinn Féin. My main worry would be people saying the the handling of the 
the pandemic and stuff and how quickly we came out of lockdown and think that Fine Gael handled that really, really well. Whereas if you actually compare that to other countries, they didn't handle it the best. They should have started things a bit early and they did kind of push against some of the Sinn Féin guidelines, especially in the North. We saw that too. You know, Michelle O'Neill was saying that we should have entered lockdown earlier and then other parties were saying, no, we shouldn't. And there was a bit of, and then everyone was saying that Michelle O'Neill was coming out with a bit of a divisive strategy um, because she wanted to have an all Ireland tactic to that as well. So I would worry that Certain parties would see like, you know, the death toll and stuff and be like, oh, well, you know, Fianna Gael handled that, those, that so, so well. But I do think that the future is bright for Sinn Féin. I think that the last election, if the last election is anything to go by, we definitely will be going well. And I think as well with this current coalition that's gone on, it's not what the people voted for. And I think the people are starting to wake up at the minute and say like, oh, you know, maybe, the, maybe these parties aren't actually here for our best interests at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but we'll see what we'll, this goes with coalition. 